Santa Fe District Attorney Mary Carmack Altwies, who is joining Top Story tonight. Mary, thanks so much for joining us and talking to us. I want to start where Miguel just left off right there. That behind the scenes video, are you aware of it and is it part of your investigation? Well, I'm not exactly sure what he actually saw, but yes, we are aware that there are behind the scene videos. I know that the, the sheriff has collected those and detectives are, are looking at them. So, you know, this is not your typical crime scene. We're talking about a movie set here. How challenging is this investigation? It's very challenging. Um, this is a movie set that, that gets used a lot. And so there are spent casings, I think, all over the place on, on that ranch. And so discerning which spent casing is from the rust production and which is from some other production earlier in the year is, is pretty difficult. They, they are doing an incredible job, though. And, uh, but that is one of the reasons that this investigation will take a while. It's incredibly complex. Is that part of the reason why hundreds of pieces of ammunition have been taken from the set? Uh, the hundreds of pieces of ammunition were taken uh, directly from uh, the, the armorer's cart and, uh, and I believe the prop truck. Uh, so they're not being gathered off the, off the ground, if, if you will. Uh, but I know that they were looking around the ground to make sure there were no more live bullets or, or other pieces of evidence. Is it possible someone goes to jail for the shooting of Helena Hutchins? I think it's way too early to speculate on that. You know, earlier, going back to these bullets in the casings, we know the sheriff said they recovered the shell casing, the actual shell casing from the bullet that sadly killed Hutchins and the lead projectile that also went into the director's shoulder. Explain to our viewers what types of clues can your team pull from those pieces of evidence? So that's... In, in general, they're going to be testing for fingerprints, for DNA. Um, they will test for ballistics, tool marks perhaps. Um, there's, there's a wide array of, of testing that will take place on both the gun, the, the uh, projectile, and the casing. Mary, I, I got to ask you, and we heard this from the news conference that you attended today there with the sheriff, how did two people inspect the gun and not know there was a live round in there? I think that is the question that remains to be answered and is, is probably the linchpin of the entire case. So I got to ask you this as well. How important is Alec Baldwin to this investigation? Well, obviously, he's he's very important. He uh, <laughs> he's the one that pulled the trigger. He's the one that was holding the gun. Um, and so he's very important. Does that mean that charges will be filed? Not necessarily. It also doesn't mean that they won't be filed. Is he considered a, the key witness to this case? Um, I think that's it's a little premature to say key witness. Um, certainly, he is a witness. There were 16 other witnesses, I believe 16, in the uh, in in the church structure. So he is one of the main witnesses. I think he was right there. Obviously, he was right there when it happened. And so he is a very important witness. I don't know that I would characterize him as the key witness at this point. You said people have been cooperative and in giving interviews, more than one in some cases. Is anyone bringing an attorney with them, quote unquote, lowering up at this point? Uh, not thus far. OK. Is this we've been very pleased with the cooperation that we've received. Is this simply a case that possibly one live round got mixed in with either dummies or blanks. Is that what cost Helena her life? It, that's, it's, very like, it's very likely that that is something, that, that's one of the scenarios that we are exploring, and it is likely that that's what happened. You know, today we heard the sheriff say today at that news conference that there's been some complacency on set. Can, can you explain that comment? Well, I think it's it, it's he was talking about the safety protocols and sort of industry standards that were not being followed based on the information that they've gathered and some news reports. And so he was simply stating that from what we have seen in the investigation so far, uh, certain things that should have happened were not happening and certain things that obviously should not have happened did happen. And that's we're going to get to the bottom of that and and why that happened. And if if that's a criminal act, fair to say, from what you've seen so far, that corners were cut on this set in some regards. I think corners were definitely cut on this set.
Okay. At this point, have you actually seen the bullets in question? And, and are they easy to decipher between the actual bullet that killed Helena and something that would be considered a dummy or a blank bullet? I have seen pictures of the casing and bullets that were on her uh, on the the armorer's cart. Um, I, as a as a layperson, someone who is not that familiar with guns and certainly not with Colt forty five guns, um, I it would have been very difficult for me to tell the difference. So the bullets are are very similar, even though they're they're uh, how lethal they are is very different. That's correct. Yes. Okay. It's been nearly a week. Why is it too early to comment on charges just yet? Because not everyone has been interviewed because the I think it will really depend on the investigation, finding out where those live rounds came from, uh, who or what put them there, um, how they got mixed in with dummy bullets, um, what sort of safety protocols or all what all safety protocols were were not followed and who all knew about it. You know, there's been some reporting that during downtime, crew members were taking target practice. Can you confirm that? I, that is unconfirmed at this point with regard to the investigation. As, as We've certainly heard news reports about it, but it's unconfirmed. Okay. As a legal matter, can you give people an example of when something crosses over from a simple accident to criminal negligence? Well, so let me address criminal negligence at this point. So in New Mexico, our equivalent to a criminally negligent homicide is what's called involuntary manslaughter. And it is equivalent, but it is a slightly higher bar than criminal negligence. Um, it requires a willful disregard for the safety of others. Um, and then that's, that's coming directly from our, our jury instructions. And so it's, it is more akin to a recklessness standard than a negligence standard. And that's just, it's just a slightly higher bar. Um, and so I can't, I can't go into specifics about when it crosses from accidental to negligence to then onto recklessness. That's what our investigation will, will tell us. Finally, can you promise the family of Helena Hutchins that they will get justice? I think that depends on what the family of Helena Hutchins views as justice. Um, and we will do everything in our power to communicate with them, to keep them apprised of the, uh, the investigation once, once we can start releasing more details. Um, and, and we will, you know, keep them in our, in our thoughts and our prayers. And, and certainly with regard to my office, we have robust victim advocacy services and, and we will offer those if, if criminal charges do come out of this. Okay, Santa Fe District Attorney Mary Carmack Altwies, we thank you for your time. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.